Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Plant Code Podcast. I'm Max, and today I'm joined by Marissa, writer and director of one of my favourite documentaries, I must say. Thank you so much. Vegucated, you can find all about it on the website www.getvegucated.com and on Instagram at Vegucated. That's right, and Twitter too. And Twitter as well, you're everywhere. Yeah. Beauty and social media. Yeah, Facebook too and facebook so welcome to the podcast marissa thank you so much thank you so much for having me my pleasure so let's take it all the way back to the beginning paint a bit of a background to the picture why did you go vegan so i had lived with vegetarians for something like seven years uh different vegetarians and i thought that's fine for you but that's not me i'm german american i'm from the midwest this is part of my culture but then um one sunday i was at my unitarian church and uh, this oh, this little old English lady asked me to go see a documentary called We Are All Noah after coffee hour. And I went and I saw it. It was not harmless at all like it sounded. It was like one of those like pretty brutal animal documentaries. It's old. It's old from like, I don't know, the 90s or something. But um, I just left vegetarian. I picked up some pamphlets, read them on a plane going home to Indiana and decided um, to go vegan 30,000 feet in the air. Wow. Which yeah. year was this? Oh my God, two thousand and one. Two thousand. So wow, that's that's a while ago now. Yeah, that makes us both feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was it like to be vegan in two thousand and one? It was pretty nutty. Um, oh, it was actually it was I think it was two thousand two. It was it just it was in the new year. I think it was January fifth, technically. Um, it was tough. I mean, it was like these health food stores where you'd get gritty soy milk that just tasted gross. Um, you, It was not in like regular stores at all. Um, yeah, it was way harder. And people, when I told them that I was vegan, I had to tell them what it was. Like yeah. they just had no frame of reference. And they thought it was a joke um, and you know, made my family made endless fun of me. Um, but then they saw that I was serious about it and, and I, I am. Clearly still yeah. are. Yeah. And it's true at that time, I remember growing up in, in the 90s as well, you could only find those replacement products in health food shops. That is exactly and right. And there was always a really weird smell. Smell. In oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes. I'm not the only one to see no, that. No, it was like vitamins yeah. and and wheatgrass. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, you put good words to that. For me, <laughs> yeah. it's health food smell. That's the yeah, only thing that is. Yeah, yeah. It's so odd. And every time, even today, you walk into one of them, it is that same smell. It's the same exact and smell. it is so overpowering. That's true. That's funny. And here but we now are. we have so many more options. Yeah, especially when it comes to plant-based milks. It's yeah. insane. Oh, my gosh. Which one's your favorite? I've gotten into Oatly. Really? Yeah. Everyone's talking about Oatly Barista at the moment. Oh, I haven't done that yeah. one. What's special about that it's one? It's mainly for the foam, I think. Like the, the oh, oh. It's good for cappuccinos and oh, all that kind of stuff. Okay, all right. I'll have to check it out. Anyway, we can get into that a little bit later. <laughs> mainly what I want to talk about is obviously the documentary that I mentioned earlier, of Educated. It was released 2011. 2011, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it yet, do so. I'll put the links down below. You can watch it on YouTube. You can buy it and rent it on YouTube. I saw that. Oh. I tried to do that yesterday, but they wouldn't allow me because my because. account isn't based in the US. Oh, got it. Which got is it, really bad. It. So I had to watch it for free again. No. Oh. But well, anyway. I could have sent you another copy. Yeah. So where can we actually watch it if we want to do it ethically and legally? <laughs> um, and support the filmmaker? Um, exactly. Through iTunes and through Amazon Prime. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Because I think most people, and it's a thing of the generation that we're brought up in, is no one wants to pay for content no, today. No. Any form of content. No. Pe people were so mad at me. They were like, why didn't you just throw it up for free? And I was like, oh, you mean, and not try to recoup the the like house payment sized amount that we spent on it. I mean, it's a very low budget doc, obviously. But um, even though, I mean, even so, I mean, that was my, you know, blood, sweat and tears for about seven years. I mean, I wasn't just working on that. Um, I did another job too, but like, come on people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were talking about this before. You you started recording it in 2005? 2005. Yeah. That's so. when we shot the bulk of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so then six years later. Yeah, so. it took six years. Yeah, the average documentary um, at that time took, yeah, it took five years and cost a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah. So in, that, in this documentary, you take three random New Yorkers that you find on Craigslist and you encourage them to go on a six week vegan challenge. That's right. There's Brian, Ellen and Tesla, isn't Tesla, it? Tesla, that's correct. The three of them. And they come from very different backgrounds and 
it's so interesting to see their journey. I don't want to spoil the doc documentary for those of you that haven't seen it. I do recommend you watch it once again. Link down below. <laughs> and how you. did you choose them? So we had we had scheduled a casting. We rented our little studio and you know put a call out on Craigslist for it. And we interviewed about twenty five people. And we originally were going to pick just one person, you know, sort of like the antithesis of Super Size Me. But we didn't get any like big, you know, junk food, you know, standard American diet junk food omnis. Um, we got just different people. And we really liked Tesla, Brian and Ellen. And we were like, well, we can't choose between them. Why don't we pick all three? That way, number one, more people can relate to different ones, right? Absolutely, you've got different age groups. Different age yeah. groups, different, yeah, demographics. Um, and two, what if the experiment failed? Like if we put all our, <laughs> you know, our vegan eggs in one basket, you know? Yeah. So, but how, it, and I'm not going to give the ending away, but sort of like how each, where each one of them landed at the end of the experiment kind of reflected reality, I feel like, because... You know, a lot of people, a lot of times people do take a vegan challenge and at the end of it, they stay vegan at the end of it. Sometimes they're mostly vegan or they're yeah. vegetarian or, you know, or not at all. So um, I feel like that does what where they landed individually kind of does reflect reality. Did you get any criticism from vegans about the documentary? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, because yeah. we're a very, very difficult bunch. to please. Very, Let's be very difficult yeah. bunch to please. Yeah. I mean. First of all, you've got the people who are like, you should have made it about GMOs. I'm like, that's that's GMO educated. Like, that's yeah. not our documentary. <laughs> the name's not as catchy. No, <laughs> no, 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 not as catchy. Um, no, so there are people who want to make a documentary that they that they care about. And you're like, well, that's that's your documentary. You can make it. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the pushback that we got, oh, Kitty's oh, here. Oh, we have company. We have Yitzhak here. Hello, Yitzhak. This is Yitzhak. Um, he's a big cat. He is a big guy, and he is not vegan, no sir. But he likes chickpeas. Yeah. What do you think about vegan cat food? <laughs> oh, I tried to veganize my cat Franklin yeah. and uh, almost killed him. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So he blocked. Um, the food was too alkaline, okay. and um, he got crystals in his urine and blocked his urinary tract two times. And they said if it happened again, they would have to cut off his penis. <sighs> I yeah. would not wish that on any, <laughs> no, any no. male. <laughs> yeah, he was out. Uh, Yitzhak, he's mentally telling you, no way. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then I was like, okay, this isn't working for us. So then I just put him back on yeah. regular cat food. I mean, it is about that, isn't it? It's doing the best you can do. It's yeah. not about making everything and everyone around you vegan. That's right. And I think that is maybe some of the criticism you may have received for your documentary. It's because you were encouraging and you were... You weren't forcing the aspect of going vegan, vegan now. That's right. Because actually studies show there isn't a whole lot of science on, you know, going vegan. But the science that there is out there shows that gradual, a gradual process is actually more sustainable in the long run. And so I'm a big proponent of meeting people where they are and encouraging them to take the next step. But it's not go vegan or die. Yeah. You know, go vegan now or die. That's not my Because you want to be effective, don't you? You want them to yeah. stay vegan. That's right. You can make them perfectly vegan for a month, but if it's hard it's and it's not enjoyable, a, a it's not going to A hundred percent. You know, some of us go vegan one day to the next. You know, I did, and I sort of floundered around and eventually found my way. But a lot of people have different challenges, and, you know, I want to respect those. Yeah. And then I also got a lot of criticism because um, when people first go vegan, they often very much rely on, like, vegan processed foods that are, you know, vegan versions of what they're used to. And it was not, it's not a whole foods plant-based documentary. I mean, that's how I try to eat now. That's how I try to feed my family. But um, for the most part, but that, you know, during that transition, people, which is very much what we recorded, um, people do rely more on those. That's and what so you I've crave to, as well. Isn't that's it? what you crave. That's what you're used to. That's right. Yeah, to take so people, people are like, why don't to... you? Yeah, because, you know, they're not going to go straight, you know, from hamburgers, you saw what they were eating. Eating, you know, they're eating eggs and yeah, bacon. the contents of the fridge is, I think, yeah. one of my favorite parts of that documentary. Yeah, I mean, so much meat, and so, um, yeah, okay, get the vegan mayo, get the vegan cheese, get the vegan burgers, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so that was some of the criticism. And you brought in uh, Dr. T. Colin Campbell. Yeah. Also, great yeah. to have him in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was um, just after the China study came out. Okay. Yeah. Oh, of course, that was 2005. Yeah, wasn't it? yeah. that's ah, right. It all comes yeah, together now. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yep, and we had Dr. Furman, yeah. um, and we met his family. 
that was that was lovely too yeah he's been a he's been a great help okay yeah, yeah. so when you released it 2011 that was now eight years ago oh my god yeah what have you been up to since then well um after the film came out um literally after a week after the dvd was released um uh, we got pregnant, my husband and I. Um, I got pregnant, more specifically. Okay, I was interested <laughs> in how that went. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so I had a kiddo. I have Now I have another one. Um, so we have two vegan kiddos. And when I um, was trying to figure out what to feed them, there really wasn't anything out there. There were, you know, a couple, you know, statements from, you know, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and things like that. That said, well, yeah, you can do it, but there was no real guidance on, you know, how to start, what the feed, what to feed them, etc. So um, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if someone made the book? Um, and then I thought, well, maybe I can do it. You do seem like that kind of person with the documentary as well. It's like, <laughs> yes. well, it's not there. I'm just going to do it. Yeah, I'm very much that way. Just yeah, just wing it, see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I also, I mean, there's a perk. I'm, you know, I. <clears throat> I have ADHD and like my I'm just all over the place with stuff I'm like I want to do this now I want to do this now I want to do this yeah. now and you know the downside is I don't I haven't become a master at anything but the upside is I'm always learning I'm yeah. always having fun and that's the most important thing keep having fun and do yeah. what you want do what you want to I think do. a lot of people are terrified of that aren't they you know to yeah. actually put themselves out there and just you know do it you, yeah, know, you right. want to put a message out just do it so that's right you are soon to release a cookbook that's oh, a recipe right. book. I don't know. Is there a it is. So it's so it's officially a cookbook. It's called the Vegucated Family Table. It's um um going to be released end of next summer, just in time for back to school, on the whole educated hook, and um it's a cookbook. I think this tagline is like tried and true recipes and tips for vegan babies toddlers and little kids so there isn't yeah so there isn't a cookbook for the like for parents of the super young set okay. there are a lot of family cookbooks um but not a lot for like babies and little ones because it's had about a, a lot of bad rep hasn't it the the vegan diet for yeah. infants because there were like four cases in europe of yeah, I know. parents killing their children basically yeah but that's malnutrition that's malnutrition i mean people you know you can't grind up nuts and put it with apples apple juice and call that sufficient and call they, that formula they a health, su a health um, shop in belgium i think yeah which is even scarier really i know yeah and they were like they're super anti-vax which is a whole nother can of worms we're not yeah. going to get into but um yeah there are some people who are so stringent about things being quote-unquote natural that um that they you know they miss the forest for the trees uh, it's it's a shame because um, it gives us all a all a bad rep. Yeah. Yeah. Even if we're doing it right. I mean, clearly you are. How old are your children now? Uh, four and seven. Yeah. And are they the only vegans in their school? Um, no, believe it or not, there's um my friend Eric. He's a he's actually um, an Emmy nominated sound guy, sound editor. He did the sound for Apollo 11 and he does a lot of sound for vegan other documentaries and he did worked on mine too. And his daughter Adia is vegan as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we have one vegetarian in, in Gabriel's class. Um, but in the upper school, there are a lot. So it's divided into two schools. The lower school goes uh, like pre-K through grade two. And then the upper school, they actually have a vegan entree in the cafeteria every day. And clearly labeled vegan sides. That's a step forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it in New York that they removed all processed meats from schools? They did. Has they it actually did. happened yet, or is it this um, all talking no, about? No, it? it's it's happened. Yeah, they sort of quietly did it. They also quietly um, sort of instituted meatless Mondays, and as part of the um, big Green Deal, Green New Deal, NYC or whatever, they've also decided to cut all city purchasing of red meat by fifty percent and um, cut out processed meats from um, all city purchase. So, you know, jails, schools, you know, any municipal reasons, really. And what's the reason for that? Do you think it's health? Do you think it's genuinely in the environment? Do you think it's animals? I think it's, animals? Ev it's everything. I think it's everything. So Mayor de Blasio's daughter is vegan. Okay. Yeah. And then Eric Adams is the Brooklyn Borough president. And he is a, tr he's a tried and true convert. I mean, he... Um, was going blind from diabetes and it was like his losing feeling in his toes like his feet were going numb um and 
he found out about veganism, gave it a go, reversed all of his diabetes symptoms, those diabetes symptoms. And so he's a, he's a, a real believer, true believer. Um, so I think that was a lot of his influence as well. When you hear him on the floor of the city council, he's a firebrand um, about it. So I think that was a, that had a, you know, he played a large role mm -hmm. and just the climate, you know, just the climate connection, you, it, it cannot be ignored anymore. And you did actually mention uh, the Amazon rainforest in the documentary, yeah. which is interesting because today that is a whole, yeah. it's, well, it's not a new argument. It's an argument that's finally gained some limelight with that's the recent right. fires in the Amazon rainforest. That's, that's correct. And yeah. it's nice to have a vegan at the forefront of the um, youth climate movement in the form of Greta. Absolutely. Yeah. She's and amazing. She's amazing. Yeah, my kids, I had told my kids about her. They were so excited to meet her. And we did the climate strike when we were here. I pulled them out of school. We went down there. And she was this tiny little dot on a stage. You know? yeah. <laughs> They're like, where is she? I was like, she's over there. But um, but they were, you know, they had vegan pride. There were a lot of other vegan kids and vegan signs. There were a lot of vegan signs at the climate march. I was happy about that. I mean, it's the easiest thing you can possibly do. Yeah, to have and, a the, and so effective. Exactly. Yeah. And it, there's a lot more to it than just the environment. There's your personal health, there's yeah. the animals, which often do get forgotten in this debate they by do. a lot of people. They do. They do. I feel like it's we are slowly getting there. I mean, people do care. When you ask them, the polling all shows that people care about animals in theory, but they have they have they bought this idea that, you know, organic farms are humane and you know Yeah. Yeah. And that their fate is sealed and there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. They're like, well, you know, if we didn't eat them they would take over the earth or whatever. <laughs> What? I would love to see an earth that's taken over like cows and <laughs> yes. you know, chickens. It would be quite interesting. But that was a very powerful point as well. Actually, I mentioned a few things in the movie. When you did show them that footage, was it Earthlings? Um, oh. No, it was actually a film called Peaceable Kingdom by okay. Tribe of Heart. Um, they were a big inspiration to me. They've made some really beautiful documentaries. They I'll haven't lately, but... They made a gorgeous film called, um, well, Peaceable Kingdom, and before that, a very effective film called The Witness, which is about fur. It's an anti-fur okay. document, and a little bit of a veg message. But I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. Yesterday, I saw the news alert that Macy's and Bloomingdale's are now banning fur as of 2020. Really? They're no oh, longer going to sell fur. Yeah. There's a lot of places that are moving away from that, and a yeah. lot of the fashion brands, which is that's which right. is good as well. I mean, yeah. that whole, whole message does seem to come together into one. That's right. In the end. And once, right. a lot of people don't want to see that footage. Right. But you can't unsee it once you have seen it. Can that's you? right. And I feel like a lot of people go vegan initially, vegetarian, vegan for health reasons. But, the re but you know, they also go wherever the wind blows a lot of times when it comes to health. They, you know, I have met more than one person who's gone from, you know, paleo to vegan. You know, they just kind of go doop, 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 try to find something that works. But once you add the ethical component, then you create a moral yeah. structure and then they want to, they're more motivated to stick with it. And you can't debate the moral and ethical side to yeah. it. You can debate health. You can, you can, to an extent, you can try to debate the environment too. People try. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially in the US, it's incredible. Yeah. There was a really funny, I think, meme it was going around on the internet that was from, of what Greta Thunberg said was when asked about the climate change she said well in my country it's considered an actual problem yeah. whereas in the u.s it's still actually debated that's whether right. it exists or not that's which is, right. is quite incredible it is incredible but when we talk about we're talking about the meat and dairy in schools and how they're removing it it's great yeah but anytime you mention these industries in the u.s the lobbies come up oh 100 percent. and the power of those lobbies yes yes why are they so big here well because we allow them to be yeah. you know our you know, our election finance laws are such that, yeah, you know, it can, the industries, you know, set the rule of law. Yeah. They make the laws. They make the rules. So your cookbook, I keep saying cookbook. I never know. That, what's, is there a difference between a cookbook and a recipe book? I don't know. No. Is it a British thing? I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. Maybe well, it's got, it's, you cook recipes. So I suppose so. it's the same thing. Anyway, it's regardless thing. of that. It doesn't matter. So you're aiming for towards the younger the young children, yeah. the infants. Yeah. Could you could you release any kind of insight into how people should consider maybe feeding a vegan plant based diet to their children? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's not the 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 bottom line is it's not rocket science. Yeah. Um, it's not. Ki you know, people think that kids are these like cr crazy, you know, beings who need a certain amount of this, a certain amount of that, and to an extent, it is true. But it's 
Um, it's just like feeding like you would feed yourself, except factor in, um, you know, a, um, a little bit more pickiness, <laughs> a little bit more creativity um, in terms of like how to sneak veggies in. I mean, there are a lot of vegan kids just love vegetables and they're just, it's all about exposure. So the more they're exposed to healthy foods, um, the more likely they are to eat them, but you still will run into the run of the mill, like toddler pickiness and stuff. So you just have to have a little bit, you know, just some inspiration ideas of around, you know, how to get them the nutrition that they, that they need. And, um, in a way that they'll actually really want to eat it. But also for babies, you like little babies, um, you do have to keep certain things in mind because they are growing, their brains are growing at an incredible rate. So you do want to make sure that they're getting vitamin D, but that's an issue for non-vegan, everybody. That's not just vegan babies. Um, you want to make sure they're getting iron. Um, even, yeah, even non-vegan babies, that's an issue. Um, and then DHA. Uh, so I give my kids these DHA drops. It's just microalgae. So, um, so other than that, it's just, um, trying to get them, yeah, just like, just like other kids, just try to get them to eat those vegetables. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people say it's time consuming. It takes too much time, but it's your kid's health at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. I mean, whether vegan or not, you, uh, yeah, it's worth putting the time in. And, you know, I have to acknowledge that I'm in a place of privilege where I have the time, you know, to cook almost every night, a lot of. Uh, working parents are working you know two jobs it's it's tricky I mean so it's it's tricky for for vegans and non-vegans alike in this in this day and age um, but it is yeah it is worth it well, I suppose when you're cooking in the evenings you can call that research for your for your cook well that well that's exactly what it is that's how we've been treating it yeah. and also it's not just our recipe so um, I hired this gal Laura to come on um, when my second baby was about to be born just as a mother's helper but she was like super comfortable in the kitchen, very intuitive uh, cook. And I said, well, why don't you help me with this book? So she did. And she had been a nanny. Um, and she got her non-vegan kids to eat more vegan food because she's vegan. And so we got started on this book. But I also realized like we'd eat a certain way, but there are a bunch of people who feed their kids all kinds of different things. So we actually reached out to um, parents all across uh, the world and got them to submit recipes so it's not just our recipes. Okay. Yeah. So do you have like ethnic cuisine as well in it? We or? have some ethnic cuisine. Yep. Um, we have uh, really, I had never had it before. It's called kichdi. It's an Indian um, like lentil dish or yeah, yellow lentil dish um, that was submitted by um, Pulin Modi, who is um, Cal Penn's brother. Anyway, he's an actor and he was in the White Castle movies. But anyway, uh, Harold and Kumar movies. But anyway, so his brother Pulin is raising a little kid, Satya, little boy Satya, and he submitted a kitschy recipe. We have um, a gal in Sweden send us something. We have, you know, we have some Canadian friends who send in stuff. Um, yeah, so we've got we've got a nice sampling of cuisine. I've never been so excited to try baby food. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the, f the first few chapters are baby food, but then after that, it gets into kid food. And yeah. really, kid food is also adult food. Yeah. Like, a lot of this is food that we eat. You just um, make a smiley too. face we with just, it. Yeah. <laughs> you make a smiley face with it. Yeah, it's just how you present it and, and um, just, yeah, it's kind of make it a little less spicy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, um, back to Vegetated together, are you yeah. still in contact with uh, three participants? I am. I am. That is crazy. I know. You've had like a long-term relationship. We've had a long-term relationship. So, um, yeah, so Ellen still lives in the city. Her kids are grown up, which is crazy, but they're like adults running around. Um, Tesla has a baby girl also called Tesla. Okay. Yeah, and um, Tesla married the boyfriend in the documentary that you see at the end, and they have this gorgeous little girl, and she's most, the little girl is mostly vegetarian. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Brian married this vegan gal, and they have a little boy, um, and his name is River, and he's vegan. Wow. Yeah. To think like how you've impacted their lives. I know. And like across generation as well. Yeah, I know. It's fun. And they've, you know, they've impacted their community too and their family. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun to think about. I think it's something that we don't realize as vegans is 
the impact you do have on the people around you. I mean, obviously you took that to a whole new extent. You, you released a documentary. Yeah. But just talking about it, just being vegan, yeah. just showing there is another way. That's right. I think it That's really right. does encourage people. It does. Also, yeah, like I lived with vegetarians for seven years. And when I finally had my own aha moment, I just thought back. and I was like, oh, of course I can do Like There was no question because I lived with people. I was like, oh, I can do this. You know, so yeah. if you set an example, that is really the most powerful thing. And on your website, www.getvegetated, get vegetated. <laughs> People say that all the time. They're like, I saw your movie, Vegetated. I was like, that's a different that's movie. That's not a good thing. You don't want to be vegetated. <laughs> no, <you don't. laughs> anyway, www.getvegetated.com. Yes. I'll just put it in type not without me saying it. It'll be much better for everyone. Okay, to hear. sounds good. You do it. You actually have the vegan challenge there. Yeah. Which is quite exciting. And there's two ways you can do it. Yeah, you can do vegan um, for 30 days or you can do vegan within 30 days. So you can do a, like a slower way. So that's just phasing out different you know, things every week. Or you can just go bam, vegan, straight vegan. What's your, the feedback you received on that? Good. Yeah, good. But, you know, people people mostly now it's on Facebook groups, which I think is great. You know, so like it's great that you can get general tips, but people really want tips where they live. They're like, where can I find this product yeah. product locally? So when people are going vegan, I highly recommend that they join their local Facebook group and ask questions. There. It's great to have that support system as yeah. people know where to buy things. And exactly. I'm in a few of them in Dubai, actually. And, um, oh, yeah. What's like, that like? It's really good. I mean, it's interesting because Dubai is 95% expat. So you have people from sure, all over the world. Right. And it was, I think it's the same principle of the group. You get people saying, oh, I'm soy milk's on sale at this shop and they yes. were like I'm going now and exactly. everyone's racing there so exactly. I think it's great to have that around you you know where you can really share with people that's right and you know um, my hometown in Evansville Indiana they have a very active uh, Facebook group and they hold events they're doing a trunk or treat for Halloween for kids so instead of kids just going around you know door to door they also have an event where it's basically like a tailgate party where everybody gets together in a space they decorate their car and the kids um, you know they basically serve candy out the back of their car out of the trunk of their car and the kids go from car to car and it just fosters vegan you know community it's super cute there's vegan so candy. ways vegan candy nice. yeah yeah I need to get some of that actually yeah there's so a lot of stuff is accidentally vegan so yeah. easy to find but there are also you know intentionally vegan like vegan versions of your typical halloween candy you know, on veganessentials.com yeah. or other places and also in on the website it shows how to organize a screening yeah for the documentary yeah so if you're interested in organizing a screening do check it out on the website and i'm going to do one in dubai as well so that'll be oh, fun wonderful. has it ever been screened in dubai before i don't think so Oh, that'd be fair. No, you'll thing. be you'll be the premiere. Oh, you see, first, <laughs> gotta be the first at something, you know. Yes. <laughs> Instead of feeling always finishing comfortably like, <laughs> in the middle, <laughs> I think I'll do that as well. I kind of relate to what we said earlier of like just you want to do everything, so you yeah. just generally average at a lot of things. Yeah, but that's, I think that's an achievement. No, it's a fun. It's a fun place to be. Like to become a master is wonderful, but uh, but I think the joy is at discovering and being being a novice and playing i yeah. think where the, that's where the joy in you know in tinkering resides and they say once you become a master at something it's only because you've made every mistake in the book anyway that's so. right that's right and we do have a big fear of failure we do were you there must have been nights when you were recording this when you were going especially the whole post recording edit that went on forever oh i mean i just i made every mistake in the book every mistake and you don't realize until you're done when you're in post-production you're like oh my god why didn't i get this shot or why didn't i do that and even just the technical challenges i mean i'm see you i see your fancy software here that's podcast. free software it's got it's garage band on macbook oh is it yeah, yeah. oh i've never done garage yeah, i do band. everything with free software so. oh clever yeah i mean technology has just changed the game yeah. it's made everything so accessible but you still gotta figure out how to do it and i was yeah i mean i was just like sobbing over my final cut pro manuals many nights because yeah. <laughs> i like accidentally deleted this or whatever yeah i was yeah. i did that this morning actually i was editing an episode i'm supposed to be releasing this week and i deleted one of the files oh. so the whole main camera no. angle this one is gone so i'm gonna try and retrieve that later on from somewhere <sighs> good luck vibes yeah to you. you live you learn i've yeah. got it copied onto something somewhere i think so yeah. i should be able to find it again we'll see so what would you recommend to all the 
wannabe, let's say, documentary makers, content creators, because it is a thing now. I mean, yeah. it's a genuine thing to be like a YouTuber, to be yeah. a podcaster, to be anything, because you can. Like you said, you have the technology, you have the equipment, it's accessible. Yeah. And you did it at a time when it wasn't quite that easy. That's right. What would you recommend? Well, it's still the same thing. I mean, what really changed the game for me was joining the Brick, the Brooklyn Filmmakers Collective, which is now called Brooklyn Film Shop. And Film Shop was great because um, it was just a bunch of peers, and we re- reviewed each other's work and helped in, uh, you know, helped each other out. Like, oh, could you come shoot this one day and do that? So, creating a um, entering slash creating a community around what you're doing, find a good mentor um, who can walk it. Find a few mentors and help you help walk you through it and also to know that um that it's so much work than you ever <laughs> so much more work than you ever thought it would <laughs> be so true, yeah. right yeah. so like i the people who made peaceable kingdom the filmmakers who made peaceable kingdom told me like imagine the longest it will take you to make this documentary and then multiply it by five and they were a hundred percent right how long did you think it would take you oh i was like oh a little over a year maybe two years you know so yeah it took seven years so um yeah but but I was real. I'm a I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I was like really, and I'm very slow and distracted. Um, so that was another like whole set of challenges. But um, yeah, I would say find a good mentor. Also, um, get feedback from people who are not in the vegan community, because um, as I was telling you earlier, like I think I'm saying something a certain way, but non vegans hear it a different way, and they're like, well, I think you actually sound a little bit this way, and it would be more effective if you said it that way. Um, so getting non-vegan feedback is key when you had people giving you feedback on it and helping you through that i'm sure most of them were non-vegans they were all non-vegans did any of them watch it and be like oh shit this is actually really good and this actually makes sense um yeah yeah in my in my film group yeah they did but nobody went vegan and they didn't i don't think they knew that this would take off in the way that it did okay um but yeah, they were kind of shocked. So this film, you know, really had legs um, because of the timing um, and the film subjects. I mean, we we picked really like fun, relatable people who are just generally nice people. Um, so that really helped. But the timing was great, and um, and I still to this day, at least once a week, I hear from somebody who said, "Hey." Just want you to know, I went vegan from watching your documentary. Yeah. Actually, I have to say a big thank you to um, lifestyle and food blogger Seika Majeur because she's the one who actually told me about your documentary. Oh my gosh. Because I did an episode with her. She was one of my first guests, actually. Oh. So thank you, Seika, for allowing thank me to you, sit Seiko. here. With Marissa. <laughs> She'll be very happy. That's lovely. She I'll loved your documentary and it made her vegan. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So where can I find her? On Instagram at for goodness sakes. Link down below. Oh, wonderful. So yeah, I'm I'll sure she'll message up. you. She's a lovely person. She's in California, though, so if you go there, she'll take you around. Oh, thank you. I will, kind well, of I will be there for my for my shoot, for the oh, photo shoot. Oh, of course shoot. you will, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's in, when is that? Um, that's the week of November 18th through the 22nd. It's going to okay. be in San Francisco. Ah, oh, right, okay. Yeah. Lovely part of the world. Yes. And we were talking about documentaries, obviously. Recently, Game Changers came out. Yes. Have you seen it? I have. I did, you know, the big one night in theaters only thing. It was sold out everywhere near me. I had to go down to the Lower East Side to finally, you know, find a seat, which was super exciting. And, you know, I'd been hearing about it for years, which is great. There was a lot of buzz. And then when it finally came out, um, it exceeded expectations, I would say. I was super inspired by, I mean, the production value was great, obviously. You've got James Cameron and everybody involved. So that was wonderful. But I just, the stories that they chose were really inspiring. I love the diversity of the, um, of sort of the cast. Um, And I think this is largely a, a, you know, white female movement. I mean, I would say probably most vegans are white females absolutely um and so it was nice to get um you know some extra inspiration for men to go vegan that urology scene yeah that was gold that was so funny that was so funny i'm not gonna spoil it but it's really funny yeah yeah and what's your favorite scene in the movie that's my that's favorite, favorite scene. scene. <laughs> yeah i mean look when scott jurek was um you know doing finishing his his race yeah. you know i was like because um, i'd been following scott for for years um and i'd been following uh patrick 
yeah. too. Um, the strong guy, the German strong guy. Um, so yeah, I love those. I love those stories. But it's interesting when you say majority of vegans are women, which yeah. is true. I see it even in the listeners and followers. I think 60, 70 percent, even up to 80 percent are women. Yeah. And yet if you look at the forefront of the vegan movement, you look at activism, you look yeah. at activists that gain media time. It's men. It is. Why do you think that is? Well, I think it's, um, you know, a little bit of a patriarchal culture going on. People, you know, take men a little bit more seriously, perhaps. Um, I think that I think personally, the timing of mine was such that I a I just it was super low budget and I, I should have gone HD. And if I had had like a little more experience and hired a, you know, like super professional crew with like super professional stuff, it would have um, sort of raised the profile of my documentary where people would take it perhaps a little bit more seriously. Um, but at the same time, I am, you know, I hear from so many people who've been affected by the story and they say in documentary, it's really the story that um, the stories that stand out and make an impact. And I've heard from so many people and it, it's sort of heartbreaking. Like there was this on Instagram, there was like this meme that's been going around. So it's like a stack of DVDs and it's the names of the DVDs on the side. And, it, and the question is, which documentary made you go vegan? And they're all, got, you know, guy documentaries and mine's not on there. I'm really? like, I'm like, why isn't mine on there? Yeah. And then people tag me all the time. They're like, well, actually, Vegucated yeah. did. And I'm like, yeah, why, why not Vegucated? Because when we talk about documentaries, we talk about Forks Over Knives, we talk yeah. about What the Health, we talk yeah. about Earthlings, and recently Dominion as yeah. well. I mean, they're a bit more hardcore. Yeah. But it's true that they are male-dominated that's documentaries. True. Yeah, and there's another documentary that's come out recently called The Invisible Vegan by Jasmine C. Leva, and she really feels invisible because not only is she... Um, a woman, but she's a woman of color, right? And um, and she's felt super invisible because veganism has been portrayed as largely a white thing. And we had an interesting conversation. So actually, in her film, she called me out in her film, um, and she said, "I was watching this documentary with this like white chick who was you know walking around the store and being like, it's easy to go vegan.' And she's like, "Yeah, if you live around the corner from Whole Foods, it's easy to go vegan." And so her, she was criticizing um, the fact that there were not, um, we have not, we did not talk about food deserts and food access for right. you know communities um, that are less privileged, and that is a fair point. Um, that is a fair point. But so I reached out to her because I had been promoting her documentary. I finally saw it, and I was like, um, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> I was like that was me. And <laughs> so let's let's talk. And we actually had a really mature. Yeah really wonderful productive conversation around it um and i yeah i really actually you know i really appreciated her perspective and, and, she, and she, she actually you can't cover everything yeah. that's true you can't cover everything but i also was able to explain to her that you know i did not live around the corner from whole foods when when i shot this thing i lived 80 blocks from whole foods and i was living in spanish harlem and i had no money but it's like cliche isn't it you know it's like white female Right. Money, you must have money. Right. You know? I mean, I have money now, but back then I didn't. I mean, one Christmas I had $11. I was stuck at home eating beans out of a can. Like, you know, it's not just, you know, a lot of people have financial challenges. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but she apologized um, for, she was like, you know what? I'm sorry. I just saw you as sort of a symbol. I f didn't really think of you as a person. Right. And that was really sweet. Um, and then I apologize for not being as sensitive to her perspective in my documentary, you know, from that from that perspective. So, But I think it would lose a bit of perspective and sense if you're trying to cover everything. When you try and do everything, right. it becomes nothing. Right, true. But but what, what I took from her, uh, from her, sort of from, from our conversation is that um, she was saying that in so many documentaries, um, it's white people coming into communities of color or whatever, or you know, having these film subjects of color and being like, this is how you should be. And look, you know, look at me and this is how you should be. And they don't, it's often, it's not, you know, a person of color who's the expert or the main person. We had yeah. Kenneth Williams, who was yeah. the bodybuilder. And we had Milton Mills, 
Um, and I, I, I think that she actually has a fair point. I mean, I was a little bit like, well, my producer is like, I have two. But even when you start trying to justify that, it becomes yeah. cringy, doesn't it? Becomes it becomes super cringy. Yeah. You're like, but wait, but I was poor and we had a totally yeah. like LGBT, you know, partly African-American, Jewish, neuro, atypical producing yeah. crew, crew of producers. Like, but you know, that that's super like defensive and cringy. So, so the point is, it's good to have these conversations. Even if it's cringy and awkward, it needs to happen. Yeah. So I do actually recommend uh, that documentary. I'll definitely watch it. Yeah. So obviously we are in New York, we are in your home, and thank you for having me. Once again, I just rock up anywhere in the world and just <laughs> turn their living rooms into a studio. How wonderful. What a life that I envy you, your lifestyle. Really? Yeah. I wish I released an amazing documentary. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's very Well, you, you still can. Still can, yeah, true that. So what's the vegan scene like in New York? Um, yeah, it's pretty thriving. Um, it changes a lot, you know, places open and close in a heartbeat. And that's a little bit heartbreaking when like your favorite places close. Um, rents are insane here. And the minimum wage was just, you know, just raised on January one and some things closed down partly as a result of that. So it's, it's a tough market to run a restaurant here it's yeah. really tough anywhere but especially here but we've got an amazing amount of growth and activity here every i feel like every few months something new and exciting opens up what would you recommend for me for a few restaurants in in new york what are your favorites oh uh, well in this neighborhood i would definitely go to peace food cafe okay um because uh it's been around for a while but it is always just it's just buzzing in there, um, especially on the weekends. It's nutty. You can hardly get a table. Um, but that the, seems like the thing here. Like You have to wait for a table. You do. Otherwise, it's not Often. good. Otherwise, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Peace Food has really great Indian spice chickpea fries. Their dumplings are ridiculous. Um, let me see. You're down. Where are you again? Around Times Square. Okay, Times Square. Yeah, there's around on 46th Street, is it? There's um, PS Kitchen. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, They actually have a bar as well, don't they? They have. They do. It's yeah. a nice bar, and then they have an upstairs as well. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Um, but there's sort of a, a row down on the Lower East Side. Is it First Avenue? I think. I'm not sure. But um, it's a bunch of like Matthew Kenny things in a row, and you've got confectionery there but you've got a vegan italian we've got a vegan it's called um 007 or double o and co double o and co that's what it is yeah. double o and co and then there's a vegan latin next door um called something verde and then there's plant food and wine which is sort of an upscale kind of nouveau um plant based all matthew kenny um yeah, but and then Ravi Durasi just opened something called Night Music. That's a vegan Indian place. That sounds interesting. I haven't been there yet. I want to check that out. But there's always new fun stuff yeah. to check out. I mean, it's a great thing about New York, isn't it? But it's interesting when you say that they raise the minimum wage and a lot of places close. It's sad that how the minimum wage, which is awful in I the know, US, I know, I know, like that has an impact on businesses I know. closing. I know because they're they just work on razor thin margins yeah. of profit. <laughs> Yeah. Because, yeah, real estate is super insane here. Yeah, I've noticed that. I always, yeah. when you walk past the estate agent shops, you have a quick cheeky look, yes. you know, at the price. And like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy that. And you're like, that's like the size of a shoebox. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and it's worth more than any money that I'll ever have. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. insane. Yeah, it's insane. It's so funny to see that. And let's say you were to do another documentary now. Yeah. What would you do differently? Well, I'm, I'm toying with this idea of this sort of vegan family documentary because um, I feel like that's the next step. You know, it's one thing to decide to go vegan for yourself. It's another thing to take on the responsibility of raising a vegan kid, which we need to do. We need to absolutely go in a more vegan direction or our children will have no planet, no future. So it's fun to be sort of in the vanguard of that, you know, in the pioneering front edge of that. So I was, you know, toying with the idea of a vegetated family documentary. Um, what I would do differently is I would raise a bunch of money from the outset instead of having it shooting on, on crap and having to raise money in, you know, piecemeal as you go. I would like, yeah, like so raise, start off with some money, start off yeah. with some money and start off not on a volunteer crew, but like a solid crew who knows right. what they're doing. 
that's what I would do. Um, but it's tricky with vegan kids because, you know, kids in social media and kids in media in general, you know, their questions is how much choice do they have in it? You know, um, later will they be mad because they didn't really understand what was going on? I just watched, a, I just went to a seminar in my school about media literacy and parenting. And I learned a term called sharenting, where you just share everything about your kids. Yeah. There are people who do that, don't there, they? they? Yeah, I do um, that too, yeah. but I, I have it, and I, I have like a filter, like a close friends filter okay. that I use. But um, yeah, if you made a, if you make a documentary, I mean, anybody can see that. And, and like the amount of pushback that Greta, you know, has experienced, I mean, the vitriol it's terrible, isn't it's it? It's horrifying. Yeah. Even and if you don't agree, which, first of all, I don't know how you yeah, can't agree with right. what's saying. Like, why would you go to the point of bullying and hating I on know, such a young A 16-year-old yeah. woman, yeah. girl, who is doing something other than hanging out and playing video games and like yeah. listening to music in her room. Like, great, you know, great. I mean, when I was 16, oh my that God. was far from my concern. Yeah. I mean, all I wanted to do was, I don't know, yeah, play on my PlayStation and yeah. play football with my friends. And that's about it. That was my world. My world was, oh, my God, this is going to betray how old I am. But it was like going to like raves and m like moshing in mosh pits and stage diving. It was fun. But like, you know, the larger yeah. world was hardly on my yeah. and certainly not the survival of <laughs> of the planet it was not at the forefront of my mind. But there's quite a few now, like very young activists yeah. out there, like 16, 17, even younger yeah. than that, yeah. that are really putting themselves out there. Yeah, the gun violence, obviously the gun violence activists. Yeah. And no, it's all good. And, and, you know, I would love to feature and highlight some of those kids and their work. But um, it's just tricky because Greta obviously has the self-esteem and whatever to handle any criticism. Um, but that's a challenge with veganism in general. I mean, it's you're going to be the odd one out um, and you got to have the basic the foundation um, to be OK with that. Yeah. Um, I mean, she even gets criticism from vegans as well because she doesn't talk about veganism enough. Right. Right. Well, and, well, found, yeah. vegans, you know, they're going to if there if there's a reason to criticize, they're going to find it. Yeah. They're going to find it. And, you know, constructive, productive conversation is one thing, but just slamming people is another and it's so much easier to do that on the internet and it, yeah to be a keyboard of, keyboard warrior is quite yeah. simple isn't it really <laughs> yes yeah. that's right so how do you feel about the future of our planet considering you are a mother of two and you do have that in mind terrifying terrifying i mean the night that found that we found out that donald trump was elected i cried i mean i stood over my daughter's crib and just cried because i thought well this is it you know this is our window of opportunity and four years will be gone gone and that's what's happened that's what's happened um i mean he was he's even worse than you could imagine i mean he talks about draining the swamps he is filling the swamps uh with every uh, appointee you know he, there was some like wildlife appointment that he was you know making yesterday like some candidate that he was gonna like propose to run some wildlife thing who worked for monsanto for god's sakes i mean it's just the worst so it's pretty depressing but um i i'm getting excited about you know extinction rebellion they haven't really taken off here in the way yeah. that they have in the, in the uk, UK yeah, they're really they've going, really yeah. yeah my sister-in-law and my husband who are both english um have really you know sort of they keep sending me articles and i'm like wow um so so that's exciting obviously the fridays for future is exciting. Um, I just wish that they did get a little bit more media time. Yeah, because Donald Trump even revoked one of the hunting bans recently, though, for protection yes. of um, yes. endangered species. He like, did. It's just that like every day. Every is, day, there's something awful. It's yeah, yeah, something awful every single day. It's depressing, but that's why we need to focus on getting him out of office and you know changing the Senate and um, keeping the House in Democratic control. Um, so my husband, he, you know, we go back and forth of like, maybe we should move back to, we should move to England. But I said to him the other day, I said, no, I think we need to stay here and fight. Yeah. I think we need to stay here and fight. I mean, if everyone leaves and there's literally nothing left, <laughs> <laughs> he'll follow. <laughs> he'll follow True. and wreak havoc somewhere else, you know? Yeah. I mean, that was a big year because that was Brexit. 
and right. um, Donald Trump. In yeah, I know. I'm like, we're moving to England. That's so much better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it is because you guys, you guys are. Yeah, that's thing. right. I mean, you guys have Brexit and everything, but at least you do have, you know, some momentum uh, around Extinction Rebellion yeah. and you have a thriving vegan movement. When I first was vegan and, you know, dating David, I would go to England and everything was vegetarian, Yeah, but it wasn't vegan. I and mean, now that's all changing. Have you been to the world's vegan capital? Which is? Bristol. Oh, no. Yeah. No, but they... I don't they, know why, but it is. It is. Yeah. And they had a, there was a, like... Yeah, at the Bristol Veg Fest, they screen vegetated a bunch of times. There's really? an activist. Yeah, oh. there's an activist there who was who was yeah. lovely. I'll but be I've there been next to. Month, so. What's that? I'll be there next month because oh, my grandparents are? are from Bristol, so I'm going to go oh, see them. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I'm jealous. Yeah. Yeah, but my sister-in-law lives outside of Brighton, and so oh, that's yeah, that's fun. a great place. Yeah. Right? that's fun. I place. mean, the vegan scene in the UK is is just incredible. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know why it's grown so quickly. And yeah. Why? I'm not, I can't really explain it. I think it's also because we do have, I mean, that doesn't really explain it because it's such a multicultural population here as well. But we just like to do things differently. Yeah. And like being vegan is different. That makes it a British thing. Let's do it. Yeah. Right. Let's drive on the other side of the well, road. Well, it was you know? sort of, that's <laughs> funny. Well, it was, you know, born in the UK with yeah, Donald Watson. Yeah, 1954, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. He yeah. coined the term. Yeah. How do you identify to the word vegan? Yeah, do you very like much it? so. I do. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I use plant based just to be like mm. more appealing, but I am hardcore vegan. Yeah, yeah, because I'm mostly at heart, I'm an ethical vegan. I mean, I experienced all the health benefits, and I love the environmental. I yeah, I'm ethical. So for animals and the environment, yeah. that's my heart. Because yeah. once you place the word vegan on anything, people kind of put the gloves on and that's a right. bit scared to touch it. I okay. see it even through, for example, the podcast. If I tell them it's about veganism, yeah. they're like, I don't want to listen. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not interested. If tell them it's about animal rights and environmentalism, like, oh, that's so interesting. Oh, is that yeah. right? Oh, I didn't know that. They so, were interested in animal rights because I... Well, I, I should just say animals. You know, like, animals, yeah. yeah. Everyone likes animals. Everyone likes in animals. Theory. Yeah. What's your favorite animal? I get asked that every day by my child, but usually it's more specific. Mom, what's your favorite shark? I'm like, oh, I don't know, Mako. Ooh. He was like, but which one? I'm like short fin he's like good answer <laughs> that's impressive i don't think i could even know that. oh he knows everything like people really? send oh he's a he's a naturalist he's yeah. a natural naturalist um people like will whatsapp me pictures of like critters from all over and they'll be like gabriel what's this and i'm like that's a ring like snake he's like oh don't touch that caterpillar it's toxic no way yeah yeah that yeah, is yeah. amazing he does yeah he's so hardcore he's a hardcore v and he told me last night he's like Mom, I know that when I grow up, I know I don't have to be vegan, but I think right now I can tell you that I'm going to be vegan. I said, <laughs> okay, good, buddy. That's good. Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. just, he loves animals. Like the pie chart of his brain, I'm going to say 98% of it is about animals. Yeah. And that obviously comes from a big part from you and the way that you yeah. you educate him. and yeah how open and he is to that it's now. true but also there's really great content i mean he loves all the attenborough documentaries everyone loves david everyone loves yeah. those um sir david attenborough yeah now um, he's, made, he's talked about veganism quite a lot he recently has recently yeah because yeah, he went vegetarian yeah but there's also a show called wild Kratts in the here on pbs in the u.s and it's a you know kids love superpowers and these two guys wildlife fans um, the Krat brothers um, make they turn they talk about animals as having certain superpowers or creature powers awesome. so that makes them extra appealing yeah of course yeah if you could have a superpower what would it be um flying really? i would love to fly yeah i used to have so many flying dreams and i would at the end of the dream i lost my power to fly and it was so sad oh, <laughs> you just like fall from the sky then, i know i would just Oh, so I'm doing the breaststroke. That's how I'm flying because that's how I swim. <laughs> that's the slowest uh, so flying. Like, yeah, it's very slow. Actually, so butterfly like, looked really weird though. <laughs> it was, yeah, it's it's looks so weird. Well, at first I'm breaststroking and then I'm just like soaring. Okay. But then at the end, I just I just can't keep it up. So it's I don't fall from the sky. It's sort of a gradual thing. But um, I would love to fly. What do you think that means? Is a dream? Well, I guess no limits. Fair enough. Right? Yeah. Freedom, total freedom, perspective. Yeah, power. Do you think we'll ever have a fully vegan world? No. No? No. 
because I don't think um, I think we we could have a vegan dominant culture. Okay. Yeah. And that's that's great. Yeah. You know, I and think necessary. that's yes, it's necessary. Um, but I don't think we'll have a, a vegan world. Yeah. No. Do you see, obviously, you're raising your children vegan. Do you see they the way they approach life to be different than the way other kids do? Because I feel like if you raise a child vegan, you're kind of removing a whole aspect of discrimination, be it towards animals or even others. Yeah. So I feel like if children are raised vegan, they're going to grow up to not un- naturally discriminate towards others in the same way as well. Well, yes and no. So um, they definitely discriminate against animals less. So my son even gets mad if I like stomp on a little roach or something. <laughs> you know, he wants me to carefully take the roach outside, which is really cute. Um, and sometimes I do. Um, I always take spiders out. Oh, you're terrified. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but like any little spider, any little critter. So he's definitely way more compassionate than other kids his age. And he right. will champion them. You know, be like, don't step on the ants, you know, and that's beautiful to see. We need a lot more of that. Um, but uh, they do kind of see the word, the world in terms of vegan and not vegan, which I didn't as a child. It wasn't even on my yeah, of course. radar. Yeah. And so that is different. That is different. What did you think veganism meant when you were a child? If you'd heard the word before? I never heard the word. No, I was a teenager and I knew vegetarians and I made endless fun of them. Yeah. Um, I knew one. I knew one. Um, Lorena Havel, I apologize. Um, and then what I went to... What was the most non-vegan thing you did? What? Did you ever do anything genuinely non-vegan against a vegan? Or no. a vegetarian, like genuine, like bullying or hate. No, I've I mean, some crazy stories from people about this. Really? Like what? Like covering someone's car with ham. <gasps> oh that was God. Alex, actually. She's a hairdresser. She's a wonderful person, but she did that. Oh, dear. Running after people with bacon, you know, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy what we do and how much we can change. And I think the beauty of sharing that story is that you can change. And you everyone can change. Can. Yes, yeah. true. No, I did make fun of Lorena. You know, I think it was Thanksgiving and I said, how was your roughage? You know, yeah. it was just obnoxious. Um, and then, you know, jokes on me. Now I'm the. Absolutely. Yeah. And obviously Thanksgiving is coming soon. Yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Coming yep. soon. Yep. How do you veganize Thanksgiving? So we did grow up eating turkey and all of that. Um, my mom has a special stuffing recipe, which I, I love, and it's super easy to veganize. There's, like, you, it tastes the same, basically. Um, but instead of turkey, um, we do this um, sautéed seitan. So it's, a, it's breaded in a, it's a rosemary hazelnut crusted seitan, which I then sauté in a little bit of red wine. Um, it's really good. My dad loves amazing. it. Yeah, it's really good. My dad, and it's easier than you think. Yeah. Um, my dad loves that, so we have that pretty much every Thanksgiving. Nice. Yeah, when I'm home. And then the sides are easy. Yeah, you know, we did, what did we do last year? Brussels sprouts. You know, we can do some sweet potatoes. Always pie. Always you got to do your pumpkin yeah. pie or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it is very easy to veganize these things once you're in control of it. That's right. But... I find it is always the one that people bring up, especially the younger generation. Well, I, say, I can't say younger generation. I, just, I feel so old at the moment. I, I know. Yeah. Well, no, I feel much older. <laughs> okay, good. So that's fine. But when you talk to, say, teenagers, mm-hmm. and like, I want to go vegan, but at home, how can I do it? Or oh, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, it's Easter, it's all of these yeah. like holidays. What would you say to them? I would say just table that, you know, I it's or I sort of like think about it in terms of AA talk, like take it one day at a time. You know, people are like, I could never go vegan because Christmas. I'm like, well, first of all, you can go vegan except for Christmas if you want. Yeah, because if that's what's holding you back, my God, it's one day a year. One day a year. You're yeah. going to change the world so much being, you know, vegan 364 days out of the year. Like that is fine. A and B. Um, you know, you'll figure it out, talk to people, get ideas, you know, in your little local Facebook group or just your vegan friends, find a vegan friend, say, what do you do? What's your favorite? Try it out. Um, And then find that person to, you know, if the first Thanksgiving as a vegan is hard, 
he's, you know, have a texting buddy and be like, you know, are you going to be around? I oh, just wow. need to like, <laughs> I just need to like, AA style, yeah. yeah, just like yeah. I need to vent, yeah. you know, I, I do that with my girlfriends, you know, where we still, we go home with our, we have our vegan kids and we go home to our non-vegan parents and extended families and we still are like, oh God, do you know what he said? And do you know And what you he, get the same conversations. Same conversations. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more about the, yeah, once you figure out the logistics of it, like here's what we're going to serve and this and that, um, then it's mo- at that point it's mostly just emotional support. So obviously you've had a huge impact on so many people's lives, like all around the world. I watched your documentary for the first time. I was in Dubai. I'm sure people have watched it in other countries as well. How many of your close family members has it made become vegan or more vegan, let's say? You know, that's, it's a good question. So I, yeah, I had screenings in different places where some family members attended, which is exciting. And I think um, it gave them a different perspective that they didn't have before, which is great. Um, But uh, actually, my cousin Chad and his wife Jennifer came to the premiere in New York. They just happened to be in New York. So they came to the premiere, and you know, they I think it has impacted them, but nobody in my family who's seen it has gone vegan as a result. Nobody. Wow. But they've all made changes in a more vegan direction. Okay. Yeah. Like my mom really doesn't eat much meat or dairy, really not much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. My cousin Jennifer in Colorado is pretty close, but she made that move before the film. Okay. Yeah. So it's 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 interesting, but I don't think I think that is pretty typical of vegan activists, where maybe they impact their friends a lot, and maybe their you know outer circle of their community, whether through Facebook or just whatever. Yeah. But their family, you know, are the holdouts, and, yeah, and it's and it drives them crazy. Yeah, a lot of them stop talking to. They stop parents. talking to their yeah. family. There's a huge rift yeah. as a result of it. Yeah. I've talked to a lot of um, vegan activists on Instagram. Yeah. A lot of them have like big followings, you know, 17, 20, whatever, yeah. X amount of thousands. And so many people are like, yeah, you've made me become vegan. But they're so frustrated by the fact that it hasn't had that same impact on, on their loved ones, on their family. That's right. Which is completely understandable. Yeah, or their, yeah, or even their partner. You know, yeah. that is a huge... Oh, I did get a... Oh my gosh, I did get a funny email. I wish I had like printed out and like framed it. It was a guy, it was a flame. This guy just went nuts on me. He was like, how dare you? My girlfriend watched your movie. Now she's gone vegan and she wants me to too. And it's been three months and it's been just fighting nonstop. (laughs) And now I think she's going to break up with me and it's all your fault. Really? Yes, all all my fault. All your fault, yeah. I was like, this is the most like unselfware person I've ever met. Yeah. That's yeah. a typical man response. Isn't it? Just blame <laughs> yeah. it on someone else. <laughs> Blame, yeah. My relationship is failing. Could it be me? No, <laughs> of course not. Yeah, well, when the when the president of the United States is like that, you know, yeah. setting that example. Yeah, well, we do have our own kind of similar comical person with the Boris Johnson, don't we? So. You do. Yeah. He's a caricature. They kind of look alike as well. It's a bit they creepy. They do. It is creepy. Yeah. And that's a lot of politics uh, talk. Yeah. Usually topic I avoid because it just frustrates me even more than anything I else. I know. Right? Do you think, do you have a sense of what the politics are of your listeners? Do you think you have any conservative listeners? I don't, I hope so. Um, most, obviously, most vegans really are very left wing, yeah. very, you know, yeah. liberal, open minded, you think, because you do have to break out of that kind of societal framework that we're yeah. kind of used to. Yeah. But I actually am surprised by the number of people. I mean, I do know a few vegan Trump supporters. Okay, yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. But it makes no sense to me. But somehow they managed to reconcile that in their head. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to like figure that out. Really. I know, I'm yeah. trying to figure it out too. I don't understand it totally. But I think it's great at the same time because you do want people from all walks of life to, yeah. be, to be vegan, to yeah. be relatable. A lot of people say you can't, I don't know, do this job or you can't, I don't know, follow this religion and be vegan or whatever. I think you can be. Yeah. And it's great that you are because then it shows that it's accessible to everyone. Speaking of religions, there's a documentary called Prayer for Compassion that came out pretty recently. And um, my friend Victoria Moran was one of the producers on that. And it was great to see representatives from some, you know, the major world religions talking about um our 
you know, moral and ethical responsibility to animals. And that is actually, um, it's like an updated, expanded version of the documentary that I saw back in 2002, early 2002, that made me, uh, that inspired me to go vegetarian. Right. It was actually clergy people um, talking about, you know, our responsibility to animals. Um, and, you know, if you, I mean, if you just think about it, at the core of every religion is love and compassion. Absolutely. That is the, that is the red through line in every one of them. And so it only makes sense that uh, veganism would be part of that, yeah. a huge part of that. And even living in the Middle East, um, I know quite a lot of vegan Muslims. Okay. And even they do explain to me because I don't have much religious knowledge. It's not really a topic I get into much because... Yeah. If I don't have the knowledge, I don't believe I can really talk about it. Sure. But what they share is that even in their religious books, it doesn't necessarily say you have to eat meat. It doesn't have to say you have to meat every day. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that you have to consume animal products with everything mm -hmm. or at all. Yeah. And there's even parts of it that are very powerful that say that you won't make your body a tomb for living beings. Right. Which is very powerful. And you see the similar things in uh, Christianity. Oh, sure. And when we do Lent and all those things, that's all that's right. avoiding from animal products. So that's right. It's become very warped, the way that we see religion and we use that to justify eating meat. Well, we use religion to justify anything. Yeah, true. People have been do using religion to justify the oppression of people, you know, people of other colors to oppress women. Yeah. Yeah. Usually the, the power grab is where it starts and the justifications follow. You know the the thirst for power and then they just build the world around that you know and you see it in europe and in, in the middle ages they were using it just to get money from people really yeah, wasn't it i mean yeah. it's a great way to scare people like give us money or god will punish you and all that kind that's of stuff. right so we've been doing that and we're still doing it and it seems like I we're know. gonna keep on doing it for but actually time. people have become a lot secularized more secularized in the world i think just statistically um, you know, every year we, even the U.S., there are millions of people who don't identify, millions fewer people identify, fewer people identify as Christian okay. than before. Like it's actually, we are finally becoming slowly secularized. Europe has obviously yeah. at a much faster rate, but it's, it's happening here too. Yeah, I mean, the power of the church and the power of politics have, have been separated and becoming more separated. But what's terrifying is the power of politics now that's uh, the way people are using it. I know. But then what is great of, for example, the internet? Mm -hmm. Everyone can have a voice. That's right. Well, it's, yeah, it's good and bad. I love the internet for some things. I love the ability to, it's democratized. Um, media in a beautiful way you know I used, used to struggle before Facebook to get any attention for any of our undercover videos that ever yeah. came out you know it was it was really hard you just the, the goal was to get everything on the news and the newspapers and those were the power holders um, same with documentary you know it used to go through one channel where you had to go to a film festival and you had to do it this certain way but now it's not that way anymore you know we used a hybrid release model where we did some organized screenings and you know it's called four walling it where you basically buy the the theater for you know a night or whatever um but um and we did do some film festivals but like game changers went straight to you know straight to theaters yeah. forks over knives what the hell they didn't do any film festivals they went straight digital yeah because they know they just knew that the thirst was there the hunger was there and they you know met their audience in the most direct way possible Absolutely. And you're on Netflix yeah. now as well, aren't you? We are off now, but we were off for now. like, okay. yeah, over five years. We were on yeah. Netflix. But Netflix is creating, I asked our digital distributor why that was. And they said um, that Netflix is actually creating so much of their own content now that it's, um, that they're being very picky, uh, really? very choosy about what they buy. Okay. Yeah. But Game Changers is on there yeah. now. Yeah. It took um, about which is great. Then, yeah, yeah. That was super fast. Yeah. yeah, normally they monetize through iTunes for, try to monetize that through I, iTunes for a long time. And then 
you know, then go to um, Netflix and these subscription based yeah. services. It was funny, like a lot of people sent me pirated copies of Game Changers. Oh, okay. And I was like, that kind of defeats the purpose here. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah. kind of struggle to call myself an ethical vegan yeah. and then watch the documentary like through the back door of it. it doesn't really make when, sense. When when Vegetated first came out, I used to get really mad about yeah. the pirated stuff. Like you you know, I had Google alerts for my documentary and I would get these alerts being like, Oh, BitTorrent, what? Like what's going on? So it was getting pirated. But um, as time went on, I was like, no, great. Like, that's fine. <laughs> Initially, yeah. I was mad. You know, I was like, I put so much time and money in this. But then um, then later, I was like, you know what? That's fine. It's no, got you just more want to get it out Yeah, I just want to get it out there. Because there's a, there's a free version of it on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, the quality is pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's been seen, I think, 55,000 times. Or something, something like, like that. Yeah, that yeah. Do you know how many times more or less it's been seen so far? You know, I sort of estimated about 3 million based wow. on our digital. Yeah, our it, it did really well digitally. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they consider it an evergreen title. So, you know, there's some titles that come out, they're big, and then they go away. But this has been, they consider the digital um, distribution company calls this an evergreen title. Yeah. So it's still, we st I still get checks like every quarter. Not much, not much, you know. <laughs> But I get little checks, um, so that's exciting. But yeah. We, yeah, based on those numbers and based on the community screenings that we have, you know, seen um, happen, uh, we figured about three million people. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you think before a digital world, that would be impossible. Impossible. Yeah. No, it would have to have had like major backing by a big film yeah. studio or whatever. And yeah. you wouldn't have had that with the topics that you're talking about. No, no, they yeah. don't. They're not interested now. They're starting to be interested a little, but yeah. And I think the rise of veganism is definitely due to the rise of the internet. Yeah. Because we can share that information. That's right. We can share that knowledge and it's accessible to everyone and no one can stop you from watching it. That's really. right. So I love the internet for that. But then you've also got, um, and people can find, you know, quote unquote, their people, which is great, whether it's LBG, LBGTQ people or any other sort of fringe group, you know, or otherwise marginalized group, they can find their community. But then also you've got the rise in the hate, you know, hate. Yeah those hate groups and that kind of a thing and just the lies that are um, perpetuated um, and the trolling and the foreign involvement, you know, in our politics and stuff. So it's a double-edged sword. It's true. It's very uncontrolled. Isn't yeah. it? You can literally put out anything you want and yeah. there's no background check to That's it. Right. So don't believe everything. No. But then again, don't believe everything here in the news either, isn't it? No. You know I mean, even no, it's true. the kind of trusted sources of media these days, you're yeah. kind of wondering what, what is the truth coming from that? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, you have to think critically, you have to you know, do your homework, yeah. as much homework as you can. So beyond veganism, what other causes, let's say, do you, do you fight for? Well, um, they're all so interconnected, you know. Um, I've done some workshops with Jasmine Singer from Veg News and from Our Hen House on the interconnected forms of oppression. So we used to do, we used to do that. So I'm... I went to a college where fem feminism was born, basically. Um, so Smith College, that's where, you know, Gloria Steinem went. That's where Betty Friedan went. I was in Bar Betty Friedan's room, actually, when I, I lived in her room when I was there. And uh, so feminism, women's issues, and yeah, environmentalism, which is linked to veganism, yeah. Black Lives Matter. I've, I, really, I really was not exposed to that much black culture and literature when I was younger outside of a few black friends and family friends and teachers. Um, and so now I'm doing my catch up work. Okay. I've done a, a deep dive uh, in the last year. I have no attention span, so it's all an audible. So while I'm like cooking and cleaning up, I listen to, you know, audio books. But um, so I'm just getting my African American culture and history now. I mean, it's great to, to learn, isn't it? You wanna, yeah. There's so much you can learn from every different culture, which is incredible. That's right. And you touched on feminism. Yeah. What does it mean to be a feminist to you? I mean, this is a whole topic that we could do like another five hour episode about. But yeah. What does it mean to you? Well, you know, that women have equal rights. That's the bottom line, that women are not discriminated against based on their gender. You know, we still are. Um, and it's a process. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not afraid of the label feminist. I, I look like I'm not afraid of the label vegan. Yeah. I embrace both. 
That's, I mean, it's true. There's another label that people tend to get terrified by when you say feminist. Yeah, that's right. And have you done street activism for... Because now that's a growing thing as well. In the past few years, the street activism for animal rights and for veganism. Have yeah, you, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, when the news came out yesterday that Macy's is banning fur, it brought me back to my days. Um, I did go naked for, for PETA. Um, and it was one of those, I wasn't really naked. You wear these, these little like nude undies and these little pasties or whatever. But I did, it was like, I'd rather go naked than wear fur. Yeah. And as a feminist, I was like torn. Because on the one hand, I was like, here we are um, objectifying the female body. Um, but I felt like this is my choice as a woman and um, animals don't have the choice. So I was comfortable with that then. Now, as a parent, I don't know, you know, of a, of a girl, I'm not sure if I would make the same choice because now everything that I do is an example for her. And I'm just a little bit more conscious of it. Um, but uh, yeah, Carol Adams is a big hero of mine. She wrote, um, you know, a book about uh, the sexual politics of meat is what it's called. Yeah. Um, and that's that's an important that's an important book. But I, I've done street activism. I've, yeah, I've been marched in Black Lives Matter. I've done anti-war um, I did a pro-science march. I'll march. You give me a cause that I believe in, I will march. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good exercise as well. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Get my steps in. Anything to get the 10,000 steps. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Do you find street activism to be effective? Um, yes and no. I mean, I used to just leaflet. Before I really had no, any major outlet for my activism, I would stand on a street corner with a bunch of volunteers and leaflet against fur or fogwa or whatever and the looks that you would get was just they would look at you like you were a can cancerous blob on the sidewalk like with such you know derision and they were just horrified by you but then some people would take it and they would change their mind and i was like oh that's great so um back before i had like a real sort of loudspeaker and i didn't know what to do um that was helpful for me at the time to, yeah. to to do that to feel like i was doing something and i did i had some good conversations with people yeah yeah and how do you feel about it i mean i love doing street activism yeah. i love being a part of it i think it's great to be out there and to talk directly with people because yeah. it's a conversation that you can't have behind closed doors that's right and it's um it's a real form of human interaction that we've lost that's we to i totally agree yeah because now we we have to we ha are forced to look at the common thread between us you know, that's why I like Earthling Ed, because yeah. he will he will just talk to anybody and he's changed so many minds. I think what makes him effective is that he's a so eloquent and b super effective and c he's able to broadcast his conversations. Yeah. You know, and I think he's been yeah very effective in that way. And he's inspired a lot of people to do the same. You see a he lot has. of people now doing that similar form of activism yeah. of being out on the streets to be at the cube of truth synonymous for voiceless right. and recording those conversations yeah and i find that is good because it empowers other vegans as well it teaches right. you uh, the whole i don't know way of formulating it and he's talked a lot about how to talk about veganism and i find it's great it's very inspiring for everyone yeah. and it's interesting that we don't have those human connections with people yeah. anymore. we don't have those conversations and i think that's also one of the reasons why there is such a rise for audio content is because you genuinely hear two other people have a genuine conversation. Oh, that's true. Good point. I yeah. hadn't thought of that in that way, but that is true. Because we're so much in our own heads. Yeah. And we're not used to having it. I mean, it's what I enjoy the most about my podcast is literally just sitting down and talking to you. I know. This is so fun. Yeah. You know, we, I mean, it's cliche to say, but like we really are lacking personal connection and, you know, the rise in mood disorders as a result. I mean, it has to be connected. There's no way it's not connected. Yeah. I mean, we're always staring at phones. Yeah. I am I am the worst. I am so addicted to my phone. What's your screen time? I, it's so bad. It's it double too digits? embarrassing. No. Good. That would no. be worrying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still a parent. I still have to yeah, like look at my children. Yeah. I think if I wasn't a parent, it would probably be more. Yeah. Yeah. But um, because my children force me to put the phone yeah. down. I was at eight hours good. a day at one point. Yeah. And I was like, that is what oh, I've not healthy. I've hit it. I've hit that yeah, before. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And it was this really sad thing I saw. It was a kid in school. They were asked to draw their parents. And they drew their parents with mobile phones in their hands. <gasps> Hoot. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Like, what oh is God. that? 
But I look forward to the day when we're going to look back, and when you see people holding mobile phones, that's going to look really outdated. Oh, by then we're going to have the mic. We're going to have the chip. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about the chip. Yeah. It's kind of terrifying. It's terrifying. Yeah. But even yeah. when you look at phones now, you have Face ID, you have like all these different things that mm-hmm. we're so controlled anyway. Our, our, all of our information is public. Everything is under surveillance except animal agriculture. Right. I hadn't thought about that. You're right. Yeah. There's no so live feed is, of that. You're right. Yeah. There was an idea um, that activists had some years ago where they were, were going to just put cameras in slaughterhouses just to like prove, you know, just to monitor it. But then that obviously hasn't happened. They'd be removed within seconds. Oh, within know. seconds. Or someone would put another monitor in front of it showing a cow walking through a field, dancing the <laughs> salsa to it or something. <laughs> I like know. That. All the happy That's cows true. and all that stuff. Yeah. Honestly, I've... I was really excited to talk to you. Oh, that's so sweet. Because I am genuinely a fan of your documentary and I do recommend it Thank to you. people. Thank so it's been you. great talking to you. On a final note. This has been so fun. I mean, we just were talking about the lack of connection and just having you in person, like actual, actually on my couch. Um, it feels very retro and very fulfilling. Yeah, very I mean, meaningful. for me, there's no better way to do this if i was to record it say through a phone or over skype yeah it's just not the same you'll yeah. never have that same connection with someone that's true you, like, you can hear it i feel like you can hear it too yeah definitely yeah yeah like it audio flows. like yeah it yeah. flows differently yeah. otherwise it's so stilted and especially as i just ask generally very random questions out of no particular order it just kind of people like there's no way that was scripted you know? yeah because <laughs> I, I can't because i lose i get confused i lose attention span and then just get yeah. bored if i'm trying to follow any particular script to yes. these things so so anyway and they do say 70 percent of it isn't oh that's my kitty someone has something to say he's got he wants food that's what he wants i don't blame him to be honest (laughs) but they say 70 percent of all communication is non-verbal oh yeah so if you are doing this form of conversation face to face then there's so much more to it than just the voice aspect to it that's true that's that's, true uh, that's not really what i was playing on talking about (laughs) it doesn't matter but (laughs) it's all good it's all good stuff all good stuff so so there's so many ways i could end this with you oh you're hungry don't give me that look oh yeah that he's mad he like, was leave. mad yeah <laughs> he's a little That's deaf it. though he's deaf so he's extra loud yeah so he's, he's like he can't hear himself so he's uh, extra he's like loud yeah yeah he doesn't have one of, i mean all cats when they cry it's quite it's <laughs> not a nice sound is it really? no but he has a particularly bad cry <laughs> bless him so it's about 55 last questions that I could ask up to you. Because normally I try and ask one precise one. Yeah. But we'll keep it not too simple. So to that person out there who's listening to this and listening to your cat. Yes. Screaming in the background. Yes. And they're like, Marissa's amazing. She's inspiring. I want to get out there. I want to create a documentary. Where should they start? You don't have to go to film school. That is a beautiful thing that I learned. In fact, my film mentor said that I didn't have to, and I'm glad I didn't. But um, if you can, well, see, I don't even know what resources there are out there for digital, like, you know, digital resources where you can learn online. I mean, everything's on YouTube. Um, but I would say, um, you know, find a, find a good community, find a good mentor. There are, you know, books out there. If people even read books anymore, I'm sure there are podcasts. Yeah, there are. There are podcasts. There, be, yeah. there are podcasts. So even just a modicum of uh, research to just know what it goes into it. I mean, legal stuff that you never would have dreamed of is part of it. Um, the I, I would say if you're going to make a documentary, I would be a hundred percent emotionally and intellectually committed to it. Because you have to want to wake up every day and be like, I'm going to do this and be excited about it every single day. Just because it is such a long process that um, that the, and it has so many challenges. But at the end of the day, know that once it's done, it's going to be way more fulfilling than you ever thought. Like I, it's just unbelievably fulfilling. So if I had told my, if I had known how much work it would be, I probably wouldn't have done it. But now knowing the other side of it and the impact it, it's had, it definitely is worth it. So pick a topic that you care about 
Um, surround yourself with people who can help you and go for it. Well, on those fine notes, there's going to be men- many documentaries coming out soon. I have absolutely <laughs> no doubt. Marissa, thank you for your time. Once again, guys, Vegucated is the name of the documentary we've been talking about. If you haven't figured that out yet, the links will be down below. Also, the website, www.getvegucated.com recipe book cookbook whatever you want to call it coming <laughs> very soon well in the end of September uh, end of summer end of end summer of summer yeah well I'll uh, mention that when it comes to that next summer thank you so much I look forward to reading it I want a signed copy oh you're you're getting one for sure <laughs> so you just like, need to tell me your address because oh, I, I have no idea <laughs> yeah. just, I'll just come and get it it'll okay, be easy perfect perfect all right and also Instagram at Vegucated Facebook all social media mm-hmm. you'll find it it'll all be down below Have a great day and tune in next week for another episode. I don't know where I'll be. I don't know who I'll be with. Might not be as good as this episode. Might be better because this one was amazing. So have a great day. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That's the year that they're saying's our last Unless we make a change now when we gotta be fast But first we gotta make a shift in what we put in our mouths These silly billies thinking vegans eating grass on the ground We talking fast food, yo, it's burgers and fries And it used to hurt the earth and the birds in the sky But now they making it with plants and it's so much better Cause the animals are safe, no more changes in the weather We better act fast cause the ice barely freezing The world's changing quick, so welcome to Planet Vegan Woo! Damn man, can you feel that? This place is getting hot! If we wanna save the world, it'll take some work If you wanna make it better, then take off your shirt Wave it round your head and jump into the streets The revolution starts now, can you feel its heartbeat? If we wanna save the world, man, we better be quick Cause we're killing all the piggies and the cows and the chicks And I gotta be honest, I ain't a fan of our fate But we can make a change now when it starts on our plates All around the world, it's a brand new dance What you're making out of bodies? Yeah, we're making out of plants We gotta save the pigs and the fishes in the sea So hold on to your pants, plant a vegan soon to be There's a change up in the system, I can feel it in the air But it benefits us all, there's no need to be scared We're gonna change the world and we'll do it in a day So don't fight the future, plant a vegan's here to stay If we wanna save the world, it'll take some work If you wanna make it better, then take off your shirt Wave it round your head and jump into the streets The revolution starts now, can you feel its heartbeat? If we wanna save the world, man, we better be quick Cause we're killing all the piggies and the cows and the chicks And I gotta be honest, I ain't a fan of our fate But we can make a change now when it starts on our plates Massive forest fires have once again decimated the Californian coastline Iceland just held a funeral for the first glacier ever lost in the country's history Due to warming weather patterns Europe was just hit with the hottest temperatures in recorded history Thousands of people are already dying every year from climate change related issues And this number is expected to rise exponentially over the coming decade Okay, this apocalyptic nightmare is about to be real Forest fires, oceans flooding, let it fill you with fear A billion refugees running across the borders in pain And they're drowning while you're saying you're refusing to change Slaughterhouses filled with bodies and they're letting out screams But you're saying it's a lie, that it's only a dream Let me tell you something man, the nightmare is real And you're paying for it daily with your supersized meal